Well, happy Monday, everyone, and welcome to another episode of You've Got the Power, because you do. I'm your host, Dr. Jason Deitch, of course, here with Chief Medical Officer of the Centeno Schultz Clinic, Dr. Chris Centeno. Happy Monday. Happy Monday, Jason. Well, with the uh, election hopefully somewhat behind us at this point in time, let's uh, move on to more important things like people's health. Uh, today's topic is all about cranial cervical instability, what it is, how popular it is, uh, and what people need to do about it. People, I think, have a lot of confusion. They get a lot of misinformation. Do you need surgery? Are there non-surgical alternatives? Doc, let me throw it over to you to let people know what is cranial cervical instability? Yeah, cranial cervical instability, or CCI, uh, or also called AAI, lateroaxial instability, also called CCJ instability, instability, cranial cervical junction instability, means that basically the ligaments that hold the head on are too loose or have been damaged, and uh, the head isn't stable on the upper spine. Now, it has a host of symptoms. Some of the more common ones include headache, brain fog, uh, dizziness, imbalance, uh, and uh, tachycardia, meaning fast heart rate. Now, there are more uncommon symptoms like uh, pain that kind of wanders around, numbness and tingling in various areas of the body, uh, weakness, things like that. Uh, and then a long list of, of other symptoms that are not uncommon. Uh, and it's more commonly seen in either patients who have had trauma or patients who have EDS, uh, which is basically stretchy ligaments. So that's, that's generally the, the rundown on uh, CCI or AAI. And oftentimes, you know, those patients just don't do well in physical therapy. Uh, they usually do well if they find a qualified upper cervical chiropractor uh, who can keep them in place. Uh, another thing that they tend to respond well to is curve restoration type chiropractic. Uh, but for active physical therapy, not so much. It tends to be more manual manipulation with a provider who's skilled in that particular area of the spine. Uh, but when that doesn't work, many times they're sent off for surgery, which is usually these days, C1-C2 screw fixation, that's putting a screw through the C1-C2 joint, or other types of surgeries that involve hardware. And uh, so that's kind of the, the 30,000 foot view. Yeah, as a chiropractor, very familiar with the concept. Um, how, how does, I guess people really need to understand the important part, you know, the cranial cervical, this area here, the, as you say, the kind of the cranium, C1, C2, those are the first vertebra in the cervical spine. Uh, it's also where kind of the brain becomes the spinal cord. And there's also a extreme amount of uh, rotation in that upper part of the spine. It takes a lot of the motion and movement very much at that upper cervical part of the spine. People need to understand that this is not just a local pain, neck pain phenomenon. Because of its proximity to the brain and spinal cord, that's why people have sort of these sort of full body type potential neurological symptoms. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. And uh, what can also happen with movement is the, uh, the back part of the C2 bone or vertebra can push against uh, the upper spinal cord or the, the front of the brain stem. And that's called vertebral basilar insufficiency when it's there. And that can lead to, like you said, lots of different crazy symptoms because basically the spinal cord is getting banged into and, and that's where all of the information goes to and from the body. So if you bang into the upper spinal cord, literally, you know, it's anybody's guess as to what symptoms you might experience. Obviously, there's some common ones with CCI and some, some less common ones, but that are still present. That's exactly that whole brainstem area. Then you've got the vagus nerve that's sort of in proximity and so on. It just can affect a lot of different things. Um, I guess help. I know a lot of health professionals, doctors, chiropractors, physical therapists watch this program as well. Um, let's help sort of, uh, I don't mean physically dissect, but intellectually dissect. Uh, how does somebody know if this is something that can be handled by perhaps an upper cervical type chiropractor who really understands that area 
and go to that next level of diagnosis that would require something like orthobiologics. What is sort of the diagnostic criteria or how does, how does somebody know, you know, this is going to need more than, you know, adjustments. This is going to really need something that maybe be more of an injection type based procedure like yours. Yeah, usually patients uh, do well with chiropractic care, but those folks who need more tend to just uh, respond for a certain amount of time. So they might need to see their chiropractor several times a week just to feel good. Um, and obviously what every chiropractor hopes for is that over time that becomes less and less needed so that you go to once a week and then twice a month and once a month and a couple times a year. But for those people who can't make that transition, there's probably instability there. And then there's a bunch of different tests. There's specialized MRIs uh, with and without movement. There are CT scan tests that can be done. Uh, in addition to that, there's also a digital motion X-ray or DMX test to look at uh, how the bones move against each other with live motion. Uh, and so those are the people who have craniocervical instability on those tests, aren't really getting where they need to go with conservative care, who need to bump up into either uh, what we do or surgery. Now, what we do is a unique procedure where we directly inject the ligaments that hold the head on. Uh, not an easy thing to do, something we had to create really from scratch, and we're the only people on earth that do that type of procedure right now. Uh, what, number one, because we invented it. Number two, it's very, very technically challenging. And even though we've done 250 or more of these, uh, we're still learning uh, going forward. We've got about 90, 95% dialed in, but, you know, the going to need to see hundreds and hundreds of more patients before we know everything there is to know about how that procedure is done. And then there's the surgery part. And the downside of the surgery part is it's there's no going backwards there, meaning that once we fuse and put a screw through your C1-C2 joint, that joint is toast. It's dead. Uh, even if you take the screw out, the joint is still toast. Uh, and obviously, you have to do a lot of damage to uh, the muscles and other structures to get the screws in there. So that's why I always tell patients, uh, if they can, best to start with the injection-based therapy. If that doesn't work, they can always get the surgery. But on the surgery side, there's no going back. Once that's done, um, I really probably can't help you uh, if it doesn't work. And we've seen dozens of people <laughs> like that who got the surgery, it didn't work, it didn't help, or it helped one set of symptoms and caused new ones. And there's not a lot I can do for those people. I probably could have helped them before the surgery. So better to, uh, to try the injections first and go to surgery if needed, because once you go to the surgery, there's pretty much no going backwards. That is the question. What do you do? And, uh, and you know, this is part of learning to find doctors you can trust uh, that can help give you the right information to help you make the right decision. We all, as healthcare consumers, wish there was just sort of the one right answer. You know, what should I do? Do that, and you're guaranteed an outcome. But that's not how healthcare works. That's not how our body works. So there is a journey to this process. Uh, if you're early on and you can find a chiropractor to help stabilize that instability, great. Uh, if it's going on because either too much trauma uh, or there is ligament laxity that's just not responding to chiropractic care and it becomes more of a structural issue than using these types of orthobiologics. When you talk, Doc, about putting screws in that upper part of the neck at such a close range, I mean, this is such an important part. It's, it's, it's known sort of as the mind-body connection. It's what everything that comes from the brain to the body and the body to the brain has to pass through neurologically and uh, through our blood and through our circulation. It's a vitally important part. Um, how do people really kind of understand when the right time is to get checked? What level should their symptoms be? How frequently should they be you know, feeling these things when they finally go, you know what, I, I should schedule a telehealth appointment or I should get into Broomfield. Let me get the experts and please share your experience with this, unlike anywhere in the world, because you really are the place in the world to go to for this injury, for this type of conservative care. 
instead of the screws in the upper part of your neck that outside of you know terrible trauma should be avoided at, at all costs. Yeah, well, the screws are a big deal uh, because uh, number one, you know, we've seen them placed too far, for example, into the C0, C1 joints, destroying that joint as well. Uh, we've seen them not fuse that level because the goal is to fuse that C1, C2. And then the person's left with a, a really interesting scenario where they want to take out the screw and then they're even more unstable than they were to begin with. Um, and then there's uh, about 20% to 25% of the time where the occipital nerve needs to be sacrificed to get the screw in. So that's the, uh, the nerve that causes headaches. So those patients are often left with chronic headaches that were worse than before the procedure. Um, so listen, you want to avoid that as much as you can. Um, and this is the kind of thing, usually, if you've been diagnosed with craniocervical instability, conservative care is not getting it. Uh, that's a good time to get a, get in for a telemed visit. The other thing to be really careful of is that, you know, we see a lot of those patients uh, who end up going to prolotherapy practices where they can't do any of these procedures. They don't have that expertise. So they end up spending, you know, 10000 or more dollars getting posterior prolotherapy injections, hoping that will help. They're told that that will cure their problem. It rarely does. Then they end up on our doorstep, ten thousand or fifteen thousand dollars poorer, uh, and uh, they don't have any resources left to do the definitive procedure that's probably going to help them. So that's another thing you've got to be really, really careful of is is getting into prolotherapy practices who will promise that they can fix your upper cervical instability. Almost never works. So be very, very cautious there as well, because not only are you going to waste a lot of money, but a lot of time will be burnt six months, 12 months, while you slowly figure out that that's not going to get it done. Are there uh, common misdiagnoses? Uh, what, what are some of the things people you know, might have been told that they have uh, that, in fact, might actually be CCI instead? Um, it's not easy necessarily for, I'll say, regular doctors to diagnose this accurately. So what might people you know have received as a diagnosis you've mentioned the symptoms but what are some other things people might go no it's not cci it's this and that's yet an often misdiagnosed uh diagnosis yeah misdiagnosis with this stuff is extremely common so basically uh, these poor patients sometimes are like a pinball at a pinball machine going from specialist to specialist to specialist to specialist until they finally get a diagnosis. So frequently uh, they see interventional pain management doctors who uh, treat them for headaches. Uh, they'll go to different types of physical therapists, different types of chiropractors until they find the right one. Uh, they'll try obviously alternative health care. Uh, they will move down the pathway sometimes of getting other surgeries. We've seen the lower cervical spine get fused for upper cervical issues. Now obviously if you've got too much motion up here, fusing you down here is a disaster because it just moves the forces higher up. So we see all sorts of, uh, of things where they go to the wrong uh, specialist and get misdiagnosed with lots of different things. Uh, many times these patients will have dysautonomia. Um, so what that means is that they'll have a hard time with their blood pressure dropping when they get up. So they get diagnosed with POTS, which is postural hypotension. Uh, they'll get diagnosed obviously with EDS, which is stretchy ligaments, um, but you know that's one of the causes of what they have, but not really what they have that's causing most of the symptoms at that time. Uh, so lots of different things. And many times they'll get diagnosed with Lyme disease and other things, uh, which they may or may not have uh, in addition to this, but it's usually not what's causing their problem. It is a complex, this is where it is a complex series of different symptoms. And uh, this is where you've got to make sure you've got a great doctor, not just a convenient local doctor, not just someone who's on your, you know, insurance network and it's covered, but somebody who actually knows and is a specialist in these types of, again, you got to get a correct diagnosis in order to make sure you get the right treatment. Wrong diagnosis, wrong treatment, and wrong diagnosis is extremely common. Let's hit some questions before we uh, end our day today. This was submitted in advance uh, by Carrie Wiles. Uh, Carrie asks, what type of imaging do you need to be considered for this type of procedure? 
Yeah, the most common type of imaging carrier that will help us the most is a DMX or digital <laughs> motion X-ray. Uh, so that's uh, important to reach out to us so we can try to help you find one in your area because uh, they're pretty much in all major metro areas, but uh, it's not something you might find by just Google searching DMX like you would find the local six or seven MRI scanners. Uh, but that's the most important one that we see. If we don't have that, then a movement-based upper cervical MRI uh, is also uh, something that might be helpful to us. So that's a moving type MRI, usually taken in a seated position, not in a lying face-up position. There we go. We got more questions coming on in. This is a popular topic, Doc. Uh, okay, this is a long one, so I'm not going to put it on the screen. It's from Barbara Thompson. Uh, Barbara asks, my daughter has a CXA of 120 degrees, retroflexed odontoid, causing POTS from brainstorm compression and cervical medullary syndrome. She also has HEDS. She's seen Dr. Bolognese and Dr. Jeffrey Greenfield. No basal or invagination. She was a state title gymnast then platform diver. So not sure if the HEDS caused this or trauma. She has not had positive results with a neck brace. We have upright MRI. CSF is slightly obstructed. She would consider Prolo, Atlas Orthogonal. Thank you. She said should, she would consider. So she's asking, should she try Prolo? Should she try Atlas Orthogonal? She says, thank you, yes, all caps, multiple specialists, and no one can find this. This is a common issue out there. Lots of people have these symptoms, don't know who to turn to, don't know what to do, get all kinds of labels, names, diagnosis thrown at them. They go on these wild goose chases, and yet you really are the, the, the specialist in exactly this condition. What do you recommend for Barbara and her daughter? Yeah, so CXA of 120 basically just means, uh, so everyone understands, a clavoaxial angle, basically just means that the head is kind of forward like this. Uh, and uh, everything you've described is pretty much right on, meaning at the end of the day, this could be EDS, it could be trauma, it could be both. Uh, as far as treatment for this, uh, I, I think the best thing to do would be to contact us. If you, you know, we can certainly try posterior treatment first, but that treatment often has to involve direct injection into the upper neck joints as well. C0, C1, C1, C2, C2, 3. Uh, the problem is if you go to a prolotherapist, they're not going to have any clue of how to enter those joints. They're not trained to do that. They'll just inject the posterior ligaments. Uh, so it's really just a waste of, of resources. So my, uh, my sense is to get on a telemed visit uh, and start the process. We can certainly try posterior injections uh, first and see how that goes. That might help because the head, remember, is forward and you've got ligaments back here that can counter that. Uh, but you also may need, obviously, direct injection through the PICL. And then again, in some of this age, Surgery has got to be the last resort. Uh, again, it's, it's, a, it's a sledgehammer trying to put in a finish nail. Uh, you know, those little finish nails, you know, those little tiny ones that they use uh, for small things. You know, you can put in a, a finish nail with a sledgehammer. It just ain't, it just ain't pretty. Uh, so, so be careful there. Surgery is the last resort here. Absolutely, last resort. All right, we got more questions coming in. So, Barbara, please either set up a telehealth conference uh, or come on into Broomfield, talk to our continuing education department, or excuse me, our patient education department, and let's get you finding out what's going on specifically and get your daughter some help. Uh, we have another one submitted also earlier. This is by, I hope I say this right, Snahari Shah. Uh, how can you tell the difference between CCI rather and POTS, or can you have both? Yeah, you can have both. Uh, so uh, postural hypotension uh, is another way to say POTS. So basically, these are patients who would have a hard time uh, if they're lying down, for instance, getting to standing with their blood pressure going low. 
so very, very common thing in patients that have CCI. Now, it's certainly possible to have POTS without CCI. It's possible to have CCI without POTS. And there's a lot of CCI patients that have POTS. So you really have to exclude CCI in that equation uh, to make sure that that's not causing the POTS. So very, very possible to have both. And as the Venn diagram goes, lots of people with POTS don't have CCI, so you got to rule that out. There you go. Such an important part to make sure you get this part cleared out. Uh, we have a little bit of time left and several more questions, so let's get right to uh, Michelle. Michelle asks, uh, do you suggest a trial run, she says trail run, trial run uh, of cervical collar before I seek care to see if it helps with symptoms of CCI? I have a positive upright MRI imaging of CCI. Uh, is this something that can sort of go away on its own or does it really require, you know, attention, medical attention uh, like you have? Yeah, usually the, the trial run of the collar is more diagnostic. Um, the problem with collar as diagnosis is that if you don't get the head perfectly on there in the right position, um, it can be a false negative uh, type of test result. Uh, and so we see a lot of patients who took a long time to find the right collar, the one that would work for them. And when they wear that collar, they do well, but they wear another collar, they don't. So uh, you can certainly try a cervical collar, see how you feel. There's no reason not to. Don't get reliant on it because it's going to make the muscles weak, which can make all of this worse. But also, if it doesn't work the first time, then find another collar and try to figure it out in your head. Which direction should my head be? Should it be more left, right, forward, back in that collar to try to find the right collar? Uh, as I read through our questions, Doc, I, I just want to make sure people are hearing as well as you, Michelle, <clears throat> that there is a difference between relieving the symptoms and, in fact, correcting the actual problem. Um, and so maybe kind of elaborate if you can. You know, if somebody has had, she says, I have a positive upright MRI imaging, she's been diagnosed with this. Uh, if a collar does even relieve symptoms, as you mentioned, you can't wear that all the time. Otherwise, your neck muscles will get weak because you don't use it, you lose it. Um, how do people think about the difference between relieving symptoms and really correcting the cause of what this problem really is, the ligament laxity or other issues? Yeah, I think she's trying to find another diagnostic, which is not uncommon. Another diagnostic that they'll do surgically is they'll put the person in a halo or actually a device that kind of pulls on the head. Uh, that looks like a halo. Um, again, the problem with all of that is that sometimes if the head isn't in the right position, it's a false negative test. So listen, if you if you have CCI, uh, then you know we can move that down that direction. Uh, whether or not the collar works, in our what we've seen is that, like I said, sometimes it's nice to have that information if it's positive, but if it's negative, you don't know what to do with that. There we go. All right, we're coming to the end and we got uh, just some thank yous, Barbara. Uh, Three Hearts says, thank you very much. You're welcome, Barbara. We look forward to seeing you. And uh, Michelle has followed up by saying, thank you both. I've started the protocol to come see you all in Denver. So thank you, Michelle. The team looks forward to seeing you as well. Doc, the other thing as we sort of close up for today is that this really is your unique specialty. Uh, there is nowhere else in the world that approaches this condition the way you and I'll say Dr. Schultz really focuses on this. Maybe help people understand this is not something you can go to your local doctor to really diagnose and get this type of treatment. Help people understand why really this is the place to go if you're suffering from these types of symptoms. Yeah, there's so much to that. I mean, as an example, way before we did this, uh, we were specialists in upper cervical facet injections. As an example, let's just take something as simple to us as injecting the C0Z1 joint. Uh, there are only about 100 U.S. physicians that have done that more than a, a few dozen times. Uh, so it gives you some idea there. Now, we've done thousands upon thousands of those. There isn't a place in the, in, on the face of this earth that's probably done more than a couple hundred C0, C1 injections. So, you know, as an example, we've done 10 times more of that upper cervical work than any other place on earth. Um, and then obviously we've developed this particular specialty, a large 
uh, percentage of the patients walking through the door have this. So it's what we see all day, every day. We know what fits within this box, what doesn't fit within this box. Very similar to seeing a surgeon that only does this work uh, or that specializes in this work. You wanna make sure that that particular doctor really knows what they're talking about. As an example, if you go to another doctor's office and you say, my CXA is 120, they're gonna be like, uh, I don't know what that is. Let me go look that up real quick. Uh, because those are not things that the average doctor, even the average doctor that does a lot of spine work is used to hearing. Or my C1, C2 overhang is a six, or my grab oaks is an 11. I mean, again, it's not something that they're gonna understand, not because they're not intelligent, just because that's not what they do all day, every day. A little bit like trying to take your your fancy Mercedes to the guy that fixes Chevrolets all day is just gonna say, I don't do this kind of car, I'd have to look it up. And there you go. So if you are suffering from any of these issues in the upper cervical area of the spine, A, if you've already got a diagnosis, my question for you is what are you waiting for? Uh, many of you know you've got this condition. Many of you are searching for a solution. You've been through, you've been searching. Uh, most people right now don't necessarily, uh, I shouldn't say it that way exactly, but there are a lot of people that have been diagnosed and have been searching for solutions. And today's the day we're saying, here's the solution. Come into the Centeno Schultz Clinic and work with the world's leading experts in this specific condition. For the rest of you who are suffering from these conditions, from these symptoms, and aren't sure what exact diagnosis or condition you have, or have got a diagnosis that may, your symptoms are similar to what we're talking about, but aren't in this category yet, that's why they have second and third opinions. So the key is to make sure you've got an accurate diagnosis from a doctor who is a specialist, specifically in this area. That's the way you save yourself time, you save yourself energy, you save yourself money, and you save yourself from the irreversible damage of exactly what today's conversation about. If you've got CCI, do you need surgery? In many cases, the answer is no, but there's only one way to find out. And that way to find out is to schedule an appointment. Again, either from the convenience of your home via telehealth or more effectively, getting into the Centeno Schultz Clinic and having the doctors work directly with you, being able to do the physical examination, review your imaging, ask you questions about your history and so on. Doc, I'll kick it back to you for uh, closing thoughts and comments and then, you know, I, I guess, repetition of the invitation to come on in to see you. Yeah, again, this is what we do all day, every day. Uh, this is our uh, one of our areas of, of significant expertise. And it, and listen, as a patient like this, and I think all CCI patients can can really uh, resonate with this, it's very difficult. You, you end up seeing physicians who look at you like you have an eye in the middle of your forehead or something. They are, you know, they just don't see this stuff all day. Uh, they're obviously very bright people. That's why they're doctors. But it's not what they do, and so it becomes very frustrating for these patients, even to sit with a doctor and say, "Here's what my symptoms are, Doc: A, B, C, D, E, F, and G." And the doctor says, "I don't know where that's coming from." So again, do yourself a favor, focus on clinics that really specialize in this area, and as I said before, be very, very careful. We're seeing a lot of patients end up in prolotherapy clinics that don't have the expertise to do this, even big prolotherapy clinics. Uh, and they end up really wasting a lot of time, energy, resources, and money uh, when that doesn't help, and they have to go for a definitive procedure, which is either that PICL procedure we're talking about, direct injection of those ligaments, uh, or surgery. But you want to make sure that the surgery is put at the last uh, step because you can't go backwards from that surgery piece. And we've seen lots and lots, dozens of patients who wish they never did it. There you go. And that's our show for today. If you're suffering from any of these issues, the good news is there's probably no accident that you're watching this program right now. Help is available, but you're the one that has to reach out and take the next step. Uh, Doug Smith has given us our thumbs up. Doug's a loyal watcher. Good to see you, Doug. Thank you. That's going to be our show for today. If you know or somebody you know, if you or somebody you know is suffering from this condition, 
please don't wait. There's just no reason to continue to suffer. Uh, it affects your body in all kinds of ways. It affects your sleep. It affects your immune system. It affects your energy, your balance, your posture, and on and on and on. It is the mind-body connection, and you want to get it straight. So give us a call at the Centeno Schultz Clinic. Find out. Make sure you've got the right diagnosis, and make sure you get the right treatment for care like this. You don't need to come. You don't need to suffer any longer. Doc, thanks for taking time out of your busy schedule. I know to take, do this program. We broadcast live on Monday from the Centeno Schultz page where we are right now. We'll see you on Friday at the Regenix Facebook page once again live. You can click the notifications button when you come onto this. So every time we go live, you will get a notification that we're live. And of course, if you've enjoyed the program, please leave us a comment down below. And more importantly, share it with people you know that would benefit from hearing, on, hearing it. On behalf of Dr. Chris Centeno, I'm your host, Dr. Jason Deitch. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you Friday. Until then, stay well and be kind.